My, my first ad is Tango Fat Slap. And the reason that I've, I've, I've chosen this is I, I started at Ogilvy and we had LucasAid. And I remember there were lots of sort of 45, 50 year old men working on LucasAid. And, and you could sort of tell, I thought, through the work. And, and then Tango came along. And I just remember it just it felt like punk. It, it felt like it had come from the street. And of course, it went straight back to the street. Hello, Tony. I think we might use a video replay here. Super, Ralph. Let's do that. Oh, yes, we could be in for a quintessential Tango T sensation here. Why, yes, Tony. Let's look again. So it was a really traditional idea. This is the taste sensation of our product. But then it was just done in a, like, you know, like that. Yes, Ralph. The big orange fellow running from the left and he gives him a good old slapping. It just illustrates the bite and buzz oh, of real oranges in Tango. Yes, Ralph, super taste sensation, smashing drink, lovely. You know where you've been tangoed. Kids were doing it to each other, it, you know, the ad got banned, they had to refilm it because people were bursting each other's eardrums. It had crazy voiceovers and it was just raw, and better than anything else and unstoppable and people loved it and it reminded me of when I was a kid and we were in the playground doing you know that's frothy man or, or all that kind of stuff advertising that just was so good people loved it and quoted it and yelled it and acted it and the other thing is I think it's very important to to like stuff that you would never do to 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 accept what you're good at and do that but to look over there and 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 I could never write that ad, and I love it for that. I love the fact that it's just a great big middle finger to advertising, to all the rules, to everything. So it, it, it made me feel like a big kid again, actually, I think. My, 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 my next choice is, is Levi's Creek. I wanted to make sure that I put some BBH in there because they've been, I think, the best agency throughout my career. On the surface, if you were a marketing person and in a fashion brand, you, you, you've got, you've got sort of 10 reasons not to make it. We're gonna shoot it in black and white. We're gonna have choral music as cartwheels turn through sort of cliffs and a forest. And the, the stars are gonna be a sort of deeply religious Amish family. Well, hold on, we're a fashion brand. Don't be ridiculous. We, we need to be modern. So we've gotta be up to date, gotta be color. and there's a lot of things in it that shouldn't make it work, but everything in it adds up. And you remember her lips slightly opening and the wobble of the water on his shoulder and the smoothing of the hands down and then to this sort of really naff sort of thrash metal. I mean, there's, it, it, and it just works. The fact that it is this sort of tight buttoned, repressed, beautiful girl, and you know that there's a very strict mum and dad and then there's this amazing kind of guy's torso. It's just a perfect ad. And the beauty of it is, is that it's not a sort of elliptical, strange, story with the product at, at, at the end. The whole gear change of the commercial is this guy in the water and you think he's got no clothes on and then out he comes and he's shrinking his jeans. And it just proves if you're good, you write your entertainment about what you sell and you, which has been the way that things have been done since time began, but clever imaginative people can make that fresh and original. But I, I find it quite unpleasant in a way because it's so perfect. You, think, you know, I've never made anything like that. My, my final ad is BBH again, but this time it's Lynx, and I chose Sporty Girl, but it's really that, that whole campaign, all the different types of, of, of girl. I love this campaign because it's got writing at the heart of it. There he is. Powerful, fast, like a cobra with opposable thumbs. He is the boyfriend of a sporty girl. She's a girl who hates losing. And as such, he must do anything to help her win. Every ace he serves is a love letter. Every cry of pain from the opposite end of the court, a sonnet. 
To her, there is no greater aphrodisiac than victory. They weren't trying to create a lot going on visually. They were telling little stories and that was funny, but that was quite gentle. And so you were able to follow the voice and follow the humor. Show her how much she means to you in a way she'll truly appreciate. With the gift of physical violence and humiliation. Nothing says I love you like breaking the bridge of another man's nose. Now hit the showers and claim your trophy. Re-energize with Link Sport Blast. It's very cliche, but it's true. And you just look at it and think, oh, God, I really wish we'd done that. And there wasn't just one of them. There was multiple executions. And they all followed the same structure, but they were all hilariously funny just because of the way they're written. It was just very, very, very fresh because it wasn't using the sort of... There's a song, there's some visuals, and there's a super at the end. I don't, I don't think there is a commonality between them. And I, I think Tango I picked deliberately because it's snotty-nosed and it has no respect, and I love it for that. And I think Creek, because if you break it down into individual elements, it's all wrong, but you glue it together and it's perfect. And then the, the writing of, of Sporty Girls. So, I mean, they're all great pieces of advertising, but um, I think they do have different DNA. And that, ultimately, that's what's great about our business, is you can be wickedly funny and cruel and brilliant. You can be elegant and brilliant. You can be gentle and tender and brilliant. And that's what's great about advertising. You're not locked into uh, a, tone, a tone of voice. So. I, I, I tried to, to mix them up a bit.